Hello everybody, welcome back uh, to a brand new playlist on the channel. It's my next aircraft build, 132 scale, and it's Zukimura's brand new, or nearly brand new, BF109G14. This is the Eric Hartman version, it's the U4 variant of the G14. I'll be building this more or less uh, straight from the box, with the exception of some seat belts, one or two bits of detailing that I'll add, scratch built detailing on the engine. But apart from that, I'm wanting you to see how the model goes together uh, straight from the box. I think the build will probably take place over six or seven episodes, probably. Uh, and in this first episode, I'm going to be starting as Zukimura says in the instructions to do, uh, not with the cockpit this time, but with the engine assembly. So we'll get over to the bench and let's make a start on this new kit. Okay, so uh, here goes. So we'll make a start with the instruction manual. And uh, it's a nice uh, reproduction style of presumably a Luftwaffe manual of the time. And I think the instruction uh, layout is a little bit different to what I'm used to, but uh, no doubt we'll get used to it. Hopefully it'll be fairly logical. The build sequence is divided into five sections. So we've got the engine cockpit, assembling the fuselage, the uh, wing surfaces here and presumably finishing off the undercarriage and then final details in the last section. ZMU's uh, Vallejo colour numbers uh, in the colour callouts, but there's also uh, an equivalent Mr. Colour uh, alternative given. And I'll be using Mr. Colour in the uh, majority of the painting, so uh, that'll come in useful. The first section is the engine, that's what we're going to be doing in this video. And we get a layout of all the parts that are going to be required uh, here at the top and also uh, photographs from all sides of the finished assembly. So that's where we should end up uh, at the end of this uh, part of the assembly sequence. So we'll get the first parts off the sprues, get them cleaned up and we'll uh, make a start getting some stuff glued together. And I've done my usual thing here of putting larger sprue identifiers just so that you can see them more easily in the box okay so it's always uh, really exciting to make a start on a new kit uh, never alters i love making uh, new starts on projects we're starting off here with the crankcase and the engine block and uh, it's interesting that Zukimura, I think on other kits as well, provide these uh, pistons and connecting rods. Which is uh, it's interesting if you want to open the engine up somehow. But uh, I'm not going to do that. I'll just join it all up. using uh, extra thin cement is my preferred cement for the majority of the construction going together really nicely at the moment fit of parts is good This is the uh, V at the bottom of the crankcase and joining the block together. Using some standard Tamiya cement now to get a good bond for the main block.
just hold that together while it dries. This is the accessory unit which fits on the back of the engine so it'll carry all the pumps and so on. Again that's a nice fit. This extra thin cement from Tamiya, it's the fast drying variety which I like, dries in just a few seconds really, at least enough to hold the part, it probably cures in a little bit longer than that. And at this stage I'm fitting all the smaller parts that I can that are going to be painted in the basic uh, black colour. So the part that I'm putting on there is the coolant pump. So we'll just take a closer look about how Zucamora uh, go through the assembly sequence and particularly the painting guide. I think what we're mainly used to on model kit instructions is to have each of the parts uh, with the painting number on them. But what Zukimara do is wait for the sub-assembly if you like and then just tell us to paint this whole sub-assembly uh, in black. So I suppose what that does is it keeps the assembly sequence a bit clearer because you haven't got all the paint guides, um, paint markers mixed up with the assembly guide. This is uh, quite a new thing for me and I'm going to have to be careful because uh, as you know if you've seen my other builds I like to paint things uh, as much as I can in one colour but if I've got different colours uh, mainly I'll try and paint them separately and then assemble them. So with a conventional set of instructions, it's fairly easy to work out what paint colours you're going to be needing for each part. But for this, you've got to constantly refer over to the side to see if there are any new colours introduced and whether or not it would be better to paint those colours off the main assembly. Uh, so it's just different. You're going to get used to it eventually, but uh, it's just to bear in mind if you're particular about your painting sequence as I am. These are the cam covers. And I had a bit of trouble with these. Uh, the top of the cylinder banks needed to be sanded flat. They weren't quite flat enough and they weren't allowing the uh, cam covers to sit properly. So I'm just sanding those perfectly uh, smooth. And just a few swipes of the sanding stick gave a much better fit in that area. I'm not used to building uh, inverted V's on engines. Most of my subjects are RAF and uh, the majority of those with Merlins so you just get used to certain types of engine and building an inverted V like this it's just a bit disorientating to start with. And we're going to have to be careful with the fit of some of these parts because some of them are not really that precise so on this particular example E51 we have a triangular key which makes sure presumably that we get it the right way up. But that key is really slack and it would be possible to get this part uh, twisted slightly because the uh, key has got quite a bit of play in it. And that's not something that would happen with uh, Tamiya at the moment. So I'm in my mind I'm comparing this with a Tamiya kit the moulding looks to be on a par with Tamiya, but 
uh, with one or two of the fit issues with this gap here at the front, uh, the problem with this key, the fact that the cam covers needed some adjustment. It's not quite uh, Tammy a standard of fit yet, although as you can see the parts look nice on and off the sprue. So uh, just a little bit more care to be taken than I expected, I think. Just adding a small coolant pipe. And this is the propeller pitch uh, control motor. The oil pump on the back. So this is the spark plug lead for this uh, port side and I'm going to paint that separately just because it's uh, more difficult to paint it once it's fitted to the model. Some parts that are silver, so for example this part here and one or two bits on the uh, ancillary panel on the back. They can be painted once uh, we've got an overall coat of black on this engine. So uh, there's no hard and fast rule for it really, it's just whether or not you can get the finish that you're after once the part's fitted to the model. And in this particular example, uh, I don't think you can, so that's going to stay off. This is the intake manifold and it sits on the underside of the engine like that but I'm going to leave it off even though it's painted black because if I fitted it now it'll just obstruct a lot of the rest of the assembly and painting so that can be dropped on afterwards. So I'm starting to build up some little sub-assemblies here of parts that are going to be painted separately to the main block. I'm just dry assembling these parts just to make sure that the fit's going to be good after they've been painted. Just a note uh, about these parts, they're very very fine and I've already broken two of them. The first one was this strut here. So uh, what I've done is I've taken the bracket itself and fixed it to the strut, drilled a hole in it and I've just fitted some 0.6mm uh, nickel rod to replace the plastic part. It's actually probably a little bit better than the plastic to use a rod like that. It's a bit finer gauge. So that's one repair. The other thing that I've had to fix is uh, the lower strut itself on this port side which I managed to snap off when I was sanding. So it's just a bit of a caution really that a lot of these parts are very fragile and the plastic is quite brittle. So uh, I'll just have to be cautious from now on. So the danger comes really when trying to sand these parts. 
because there is a tendency for them to flex a little bit so it's uh, probably wise just to support them like that under your finger whilst you're sanding the sprue gates off. There's no flash on these parts, it's a brand new mould obviously. But I'll just scrape along these just to remove any trace of the mould seam. I think it's worth doing particularly on pipes like this. For some reason they do tend to show the mould seam a little bit more than other parts. I'm just uh, using a knife to scrape there and a combination of uh, the knife sanding sticks. This is the oil tank. So uh, fits on front of the engine eventually. And just a bit of Mr. Surfacer required on this just to fill in some little gaps on the underside. And again on the engine top plate just at the front there where there was a pretty poor fit. Just fitting some of the coolant pipes now. And preparing the rest of the plumbing for the engine. These parts are really delicate, you've got to be really careful with them. These are all the parts prepared now for the engine. So they've had the first uh, clean up if you like. And I've given them all a coat of Mr. Surface Air 1500 primer. And that's just shown a couple of areas where I just need to do a little bit more clean up. The primer particularly shows up any remaining seam lines that uh, you've missed. Uh, and it just gives you the chance to go around, clean those up before you put the top coats on. So... Uh, these have all been checked now, I'm happy with all of them and they're ready for those top coats. So for the main engine, they were black. I'm going to be using a rubber black on these, so it's not a jet black. Uh, and I'll do some highlighting uh, with a dry brush technique just to bring out some of the detail on the block. Obviously if you just painted it matte black, you'd lose a lot of the detail in this. So just that dry brushing helps to uh, bring the detail back out again. So that's the next step. Get uh, a coat of base paint on all of these parts. Okay, so starting the painting now, I'm using my Harbour and Steenbeck Infinity Airbrush with a 0.3 nozzle in it. Just using some Mr. Hobby tire black for the main black parts on the engine so it's uh, not a pure black but uh, really it's a very dark grey I suppose and the compressor is set to about 12 psi something like that and it's fairly low pressure because I want to get into all the uh, crevices and detail around the engine especially on the V once you've got those fiddly parts done you can open the uh, nozzle up a little bit to do the main uh, part of the block the paints thinned about 50% with Mr Hobby leveling thinners using some Mr. Hobby RLM 02 now. There's quite a bit on the engine and in the engine bay that's RLM 02. 
although I did make a bit of a slip up a bit later on in the build which I'll come back to. It's the oil tank. And the exhaust shrouds. Let all those uh, dry before I do anything else with them. I'll be giving these RLM O2 parts a weathering wash using an enamel wash. So what I've done here is applied a coat of varnish to them and that will just accept the wash a little bit better. You can see they're all coated. And for the uh, gloss coat I've used this Mr. Colour GX Super Clear 3. And it's the first time I've used this and from what I've seen so far of those parts that I've just done uh, it's uh, a really nice smooth finish. So we'll uh, We'll have to see how this works. As I said, it's the first time I've used it. So it'll be interesting for me to see if this is any better than the Tamiya X22 gloss varnish that I normally use. Next I'm going to pick out all the areas that are called out as silver in the ZM instructions. And for that I'm going to be using this Mr. Colour Super Metallic. This is Super Fine Silver 2 and it's a really fine pigment as the name suggests. Often with metallics uh, if you use them a lot you'll know that you can see often the uh, grain or flake of the metallic in the paint but this is really fine. Uh, so it's my preferred silver now. Now I'm fortunate to have an airbrush dedicated for metallic paints which is this uh, Badger Renegade. These are all the parts with their basic colours on. Uh, the parts that I'm going to be doing a weathering wash on, the RLM02 grey parts, which are these, uh, they've all been gloss varnished as you've seen. We don't need to put any gloss on the metallic parts, they'll accept a weathering wash uh, as they are, so we don't need to worry about those. And the black parts, the main engine block and these other bits and pieces for the supercharger and the induction. Uh, I'll just give those a, a very light dry brushing just to uh, highlight the edges as I said earlier on in the video. So they're going to be left now for uh, a day just to make sure they're perfectly dry. They're prob probably okay now for a wash but I'm not going to risk it. We'll uh, just leave it. I've got other projects I can be doing. So I'll come back to the model in the morning and uh, we'll do that next step. So applying a wash now to all of the parts, starting with these that I've painted in the superfine silver. And I know that a lot of people just put a wash all over the part. I don't do that. Just apply where I want the wash. It's just to highlight the detail on these parts including the mounting brackets for all the plumbing. The wash just goes really nicely onto the super fine silver, it doesn't require any varnish.
these parts were problematic. The small coil at the front is a two part assembly. And when I came to assemble these a bit later on in the build, uh, I had problems with alignment, which uh, I'll come back to. The wash on the engine bearers. There's lots of detail on these, so it's worth uh, using the wash to bring the detail out. This is uh, MIG Starship wash. It's uh, code 1009. It's a brown, dark brown colour really. So it's uh, really a uh, wash that I use an awful lot. It's great on camouflage schemes for panel line washes. And it's nice on engines like this. It just has the slight impression of grease and grime in all the recesses. So I use it a lot. Going on to uh, do a dry brush of the main engine now. So I'm using some German grey, some Tamiya German grey for that. And here I'm just using a pen, a paint pen to bring out some of the bolt detail on the engine. As it turns out the two that I've just marked there are location points for the coolant tanks. So that was a bit of a waste of time but uh, There are plenty of uh, nuts and bolts to highlight on the engine. This is Tamiya lacquer paint. It's uh, titanium silver. I'm just using that to brush paint some of the detail that I couldn't capture with the airbrush. These lacquer paints paint really nicely with a brush. They're nice and smooth. Thinned a little bit with some levelling thinner. Uh, which is difficult with metallics sometimes they can be a bit grainy and difficult to paint but not these this is the fuel injection unit fuel injection pump which of course uh, gave the 109 an advantage early in the war against, particularly against RAF aircraft with Merlin engines that didn't have fuel injection. This is the induction, air induction unit. On the bottom of the engine, as it turns out, with it being an inverted V. So the supercharger, which you can see on the left there, feeds down onto the air induction. Just taking off the wash now. These are parts have had 24 hours to dry. So uh, the wash won't just rub straight away. It'll stay in all the detail. So I'm just using a Q-tip cotton bud to clean that uh, excess wash off. There isn't a lot, as you saw, that I don't smother the parts with the weathering wash. And that just adds a nice uh, level of detail, just enhances the detail that Zukimura already provide. And just adds that little suggestion of dirt and grime as well. Makes a big difference actually on the pipes that were painted silver. It just uh, highlights all the brackets 
on these pipe rolls just adds that little bit more detail and definition to the pieces. These uh, coolant tanks, uh, Zukimura call out for them to be RLM02 in the instructions. As you can see I've painted them silver and I think I've been looking at photographs uh, of these engines, the 605, where a lot of the uh, coolant tanks were in silver. So I think I just had that in my mind and overlooked the instructions. Just doing a, a dry brush now on the RLMR2. This is with a little bit of IJN Grey, a Tamiya acrylic colour. And it's just a lighter shade of the Mr Hobby RLMR2, so it just brings out those details. Just using some of that super fine silver to go in and do the supercharger fan. And starting now to add some of the plumbing. You'll see by the end of this that there's an awful lot of plumbing to fit and it's really important to follow the sequence of the instructions because some of these uh, pipes can obstruct if you uh, assemble them too early. On with the spark plug cords now. And that plugs into the magneto at the top. Nice fit of those parts, no problem. These are the machine gun mountings on the top of the engine. This is one of those parts that you're not going to get in once you've installed the engine bearers, so uh, as I said, it's important to follow the sequence. This pipe needs to be threaded uh, through the starboard bearer, which I'm uh, assembling at this point. Got the port one on already. So obviously that uh, pipe needs to be threaded, otherwise you're not going to get it in once the bearers fitted. It's fairly clear in the instructions which way uh, or the route that that uh, pipe's got to take. On with the exhaust shrouds next. Again these are a nice positive fit. You can see how the wash and dry brush has brought out the detail on these parts. Just attach the pipe now, now it's secure. I've just left that loose up until now. And it can uh, be glued down at the bottom there onto the exhaust shroud. This is when I came into, uh, this is when I ran into some difficulty trying to fit these pipes because, as I mentioned, I'd fitted the coils at the front. I think I've got this one slightly out of sequence. Uh, it probably needed to go on a little bit earlier. As you can see, you've got to thread it through there. It is possible to do it, it's not a problem. and just attach it to the port exhaust shroud. So it's starting to look busy now. As described in the instructions, I couldn't get these parts to fit. 
and that's because the location of the coils at the front there uh, which uh, Zukimura tell you to assemble earlier on the key to it isn't precise enough so the angle that you get with those parts can lead to misalignment which I got on both sides so eventually I had to dismantle these parts and take the spirals off and reassemble them here at this point without the second part fitted. We'll add those in a moment once this part's lined up. So the parts I had problems with were these, E30 and E31. And I found that uh, assembling the main pipe and then fitting E30 and E31 was the way to go. But I made the mistake of assembling them initially, as Zukimura uh, suggests you do. But uh, the engineering of the kit isn't precise enough. Uh, with the keys, as I said, to make sure that these all align. So you've got to do it whilst you're assembling it like this. Just while the part's on now, just a little bit of uh, detail painting on the connections. And now the coolant tanks. I'm debating at the moment whether to remove these and paint them as Zukimura suggest in the RLM 2 I'll have to think about it. As I said, I've seen photographs of these engines with the uh, coolant tanks in the silver colour. So I might leave them. It's in the oil tank now, just a little bit of medium CA on the connection points. And that just drops over the propeller gearbox at the front. It's a nice fit, positive location. Make sure it's aligned. And finishing the rest of the plumbing now. These uh, go together really nicely actually. Didn't have any problems uh, getting these to come together. Which is uh, good engineering. They've got to go over quite a distance as you can see and connect fairly precisely to uh, another pipe further back on the engine so credit to Zukimura for getting this right just a line in the pipe at the back nearly there with this the oil pipe from the oil tank so this is the last bit of plumbing now to fit it's part of the uh, oil pipe system Connect them up to the bottom of the oil tanks.
These parts E18 and E7, uh, I'm not going to be using. Zukimura explained to us that uh, we don't fit those if we're having the lower cowling in place, which I will on this build. This is the uh, DC generator. So you can see that everything goes together pretty well. It's quite a complex uh, assembly and to get all those parts to line up is quite a feat of plastic engineering really so I'm pretty happy with how that's gone together really all things considered. Apart from the problems I had with uh, breaking one or two parts but uh, I'm forewarned now so I'll be a bit more careful when we come on to build the cockpit. So I'll look around the engine there. You notice that the port bearer is missing at the bottom. I'm not going to try and fit that uh, just yet. I'll wait until the rest of the engine goes onto the bulkhead and at that point I'll fit that missing uh, bearing at the back. It's one of those parts that I broke unfortunately. So I'll leave you now with uh, some shots of the engine, completed engine, and I'll see you in part two coming up soon uh, for the cockpit build. So thanks for joining me for this one everybody. Uh, see you next time. Bye for now.